world. You're welcome to today's video lesson. Okay, this is 2021 Neko Physics Practical Prediction Question Number One: The Cheats to the Previously Performed Experiment. All right, I will not uh, be reading the questions this time around. If you want the question, you can just pause the video right now and copy down the question. Meanwhile, if you find this video informative and educative, please, I would like you to hit that subscribe button, the bell icon for notifications for when I upload other videos, and the thumbs icon. All right, let us go straight to the main point. Now, how are we going to outsmart this practical? And for us to be able to do that, we need to understand two principal concepts on which this experiment is hinged. And they are the Hooke's law and the period of a vibrating spring. From Hooke's law, force is equal to Ke, where K is the stiffness of the spring and E is the extension. Also, the period of a vibrating spring with a mass attached to it is given by the formula T is equal to 2 pi square root of M over K, where M is the mass, T is the period, and K is the stiffness of the spring. All right, let's go straight to the main point. Okay, I have performed a little experiment here. The first value, not all. The question requires that we should find the length of the spring. And I have done that already. The length of my spring here is 11.2 centimeters. All right? Okay. So when I hang the first mass, 50 grams, okay? Now, I had discovered that the spring extends and my pointer it points to a value of 65.6 centimeter on the meter rule. So to get the actual final length of the spring, I will do 65.6 minus 53.5. 53.5 is the starting point of that spiral spring on the meter rule. The reading of the starting point of the spiral spring on the meter rule, that's 53.5. And when I subtract that difference, I will have 12.1. I record it. And the extension will be 0 0.9 if I do 12.1 minus 11.2. All right. With that in mind now, I will solve for the stiffness of the spring using Hooke's law. I know Hooke's law states that F is equal to Ke, right? So I am going to substitute some values here, but force here is mass times acceleration due to gravity, mg, okay? Okay, now m here, the mass is in grams, and we will express that acceleration due to gravity in centimeter per second square, not meter per second square. Okay, that's what we'll be doing throughout this experiment. So 10 meter per second square, when converted, becomes 1,000 centimeter per second square. All right, so when we use it, don't get confused. Okay. Now, since force is equal to mass times acceleration, so when M is 50 grams, the force there is what 50,000 grams cm per second square. Okay, from Hooke's law, we find the, the spring constant now. Okay, I'm putting in the values where necessary. The spring constant K becomes what? 55,555.56 gram per second square. And that's the value we'll be using throughout this experiment. Okay, now looking at the value for the period of a spiral spring and substituting the the, 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 the constants there when necessary, okay, the variables, sorry, we will not have that T, which is the period, is approximately 0 0.19 seconds. And the square of the period is what, 0 0.036 seconds. So if T, the time taken for one oscillation, if T is the time taken for one oscillation, then the time taken for 10 oscillations will be 0 0.19 times 10, which is what, 1.90 seconds. 
we will simply impute it in our table of values, okay? Now, for T1 and T2 in that table of values, I simply pick a random two, two numbers that their average will give me, what, 1.9, okay? That's how I got the T1 and T2, just two random numbers that their average will give me 1.9. All right, let's move straight to when the mass becomes 70 grams. So when the mass becomes 70 grams, the same procedure kicks in here. So the force will now be 70 times 1,000, sorry, which is what, 70,000 grams cm per second square. So using the Hooke's law, now we are going to find the extension this time around. So putting in the values when necessary, the extension becomes, what, 1.26 centimeters, all right? So what will be the length? The final length will simply be the extension plus the original length, which is what, 12.46 centimeters. Remember the formula for the period of a simple spiral spring where it has a mass, okay, oscillating. So substituting for the variables there, where necessary, we have that the period is approximately was 0 0.223 seconds, and the square of the period is was 0 0.045 seconds square. So if T is the time for one oscillation, then the time taken for 10 oscillations will simply be 0 0.223 times 10, which is equal to what 2.23 seconds. So we impute the values in our table of values. Right. Now when the mass becomes 90 grams, the same procedure kicks in. Okay? Just that here, the M becomes 90. We change the mass to 90. All right, so... Solving for the extension, this time around, the extension will give us 1.62 centimeters, okay? Now, the final length, okay, will now be 1.62 plus 11.2, which will, which will give us 12.82 centimeters. Using the formula for the period, okay? So, I'm, I'm making substitutions where necessary. We now have that the period is approximately what, 0 0.251 seconds, and the square of the period is 0 0.063 seconds square. So if the period is time for one oscillation, then the time taken for 10 oscillations will simply be what, 0 0.251 times 10, which is equal to what, 2.51 seconds. Okay, there we impute them in our table of values. Remember I said that... Uh, T1 and T2, that's the two times that we have there, okay? I just pick two random numbers that their average will simply give me, what, 2.51 seconds. As simple as that. That's not a big deal. You can see how our results are unfolding. You can compare the values we have in this table and the previous one we did in my previous video. All right. So when the mass now becomes 110 grams, right? When the mass becomes 110 grams, the same procedure kicks in here. So force is equal to Ke, solving for the extension in this case, where, where we substitute the necessary values, we have that the extension here becomes 1.98 centimeters, All right now. To find the final length, we simply do the extension plus the original length of the spring, which will give us, what, 13.18 centimeters. Now, using the formula for the period of a spiral spring, okay, oscillating, and making substitutions where necessary, we now find that the period is equal to 0 0.28, approximately 0 0.28 seconds, and the square of the period is, what, 0 0.078 seconds square. Also, if T is the time taken for one oscillation, then the time taken for 10 oscillations will simply be 0 0.28 times 10, which is equal to what, 2.8 seconds. So we impute this in our table of values. We are necessary. Okay, remember T1 and T2 are two random numbers that their average will simply give me what, 2.8 seconds. Okay? Now, moving over to when the mass becomes 130 grams, what happens in this case? The same procedure kicks in. 
All right, so F is equal to 130 times 1,000, which gives me what? 130,000 grams cm per second square. Solving for the extension here using Hooke's law and making substitutions where necessary, we find that the extension recorded here will simply be 2.34 centimeters. Okay, now find the final length of the spring. Okay, the final length of the spring will simply be what? The extension plus the original length, which is also 13.54 centimeters. And using the formula for the period of a simple pendulum, and making substitutions where necessary, simply have that the period is equal to what? 0 0.304 seconds. And the square of the period is what? 0 0.092 seconds square. And if the period... Is the time taken for one oscillation, then the time taken for 10 oscillations will simply be 0 0.304 times 10, which gives us 3.04 seconds. All right, so we now move over to the graph plot, and here we have the graph of E against T square. Now, the scale we are using here is a scale of 2 centimeters to represent 0 0.5 units on the vertical axis and 1 cm to represent 0.01 units on the horizontal axis. All right, I have made a video on how to choose your scale, okay? So go and make reference to that video on how to plot graph in maths and physics, okay? Now, let's go straight to plotting our points. We simply here, when t square is 0.036, e is equal to 0.9, Okay, we mark out the point. When t squared is 0 0.045, e is equal to 1.26, we mark out the points as well. When t squared is 0 0.063, e is 1.62, we mark out the points. When t squared is 0 0.078, e in this case is 1.98, right? We mark out the points. And lastly, when t squared is 0 0.092, E is 2.34, all right? So we mark out the points. Then we join with a very straight line, okay? As you can see. Then let's move straight to the slope. To find the slope, I simply draw a convenient right angle triangle from that slope and read the values off to the axis. Then the slope is simply change in the vertical axis divided by change in the horizontal axis, all right? Now, change in the vertical axis is simply change in E all over change in T square. And the two values I have there is 2.50 minus 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.1 minus 0 0.036. And simplifying everything, the slope becomes 25.0 centimeter per second square. Okay, the unit is very, very important centimeter per second square okay we've come to the end of this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button the like button this and subscribe and put on the bell icon for more notifications when i upload other videos thank you for giving me part of your time don't forget to study to show yourself approved have a wonderful day thank you for watching